we're taking a look at the Tiny Hawk Nano Scout RTF, an all-in-one that's designed specifically for racing. Now, the Tiny Hawk 3 has been a successful drone for Emacs, but it was designed more as a fun drone for exploration and shooting gaps. Now, they've gone back to the drawing board to design a true 65mm drone that's not only faster, but also more durable. So, let's open this up and see what you get. Okay, so as you can see, we have a really nice case here with a pretty strong handle here. And this contains everything you need to just go straight to a race. We're talking about the drone, the goggles, and even the radio all in this one carry case right here. So let's open this up and see how it looks. All right, pretty cool. And the first thing I see here is these goggles. These are the Transporter 2 analog goggles. And we'll take a look at this a little bit later. Next, we have the actual transmitter and it says E8. I've used this one before. It's pretty nice, nice gray color. And the cool thing is that they have all these labels on this radar here. So if you're new to the FPV world, this should be pretty good for you. Next, we have the drone itself. It's covered here by this black foam. And here it is, the Nano Scout right here. This thing is pretty small. It is a 65 millimeter drone. Pretty cool. All right, next we have some hardware here and some cables. We have one here for the actual monitor, a charging cable, looks like a battery charger, some hardware here with the screwdriver, and a looks like a USB-A to micro USB cable here. And then last but not least, you have manuals and the antenna for your goggles, as well as an Express LRS card. And then we have two batteries in here. So these look like 1S batteries, these are actually 320 milliamp hour and their Emacs brand is so pretty cool. We'll talk about this a little bit later. This is one of the highlights of this whole kit. This thing here is pretty small. I mean, it is a true 65 millimeter drone. This is perfect for spec racing here. And it's pretty small and light. So let's see how much it weighs. Now Emacs has this thing here weighs around 22.9 grams. Let's see what it says. There you go, it says 23. So that makes sense. Uh, so 22.9 is pretty light. Let's add the battery to it as well and see how much it weighs complete weight. 32 grams, so not too bad. Okay, so let's take a closer look at the Nano Scout. And the first thing that jumps is how small this looks, yet it looks very durable. It's kind of weird in the same time. And that's due to these thicker ducts right here. And this was done by design to make this a very, very durable drone. So if you're gonna be a first time racer, this might be the perfect drone for you. Emacs philosophy is that they'd rather have you crash and be able to recover and continue a whole race session then crash and be out of a race altogether because of a broken component like these propeller guards right here. Now there's a lot of first by Emacs on this drone, including this the new motor and prop combination. This is an 801.5, which is good for 22,000 kV. It's not really one of the lowest or the highest in the market. It's really a good medium. And Emacs says that strikes a good balance between efficiency and performance. We'll see about that once we fly this drone. Now besides that connected to the motors, we do have an F4 processor with six amp ESCs. So that's a little bit higher than the traditional drones in the market. Typically you see a five amp ESC on these tiny whoops, but six amp seems to be a little bit more and that should increase the durability of the ESCs on this drone. Now besides that you have a camera in here, this is the Runcam Nano 3. Now we've used this camera before in the past and it really delivers really good colors. So this would be a good combination for this drone. As you can see, we have a canopy here, which is really nice. And this thing here is adjustable, so you can adjust the tilt on the camera. We do have some holes on the canopy itself for ventilation, as well as weight reduction. So pretty cool uh, setup here by Emacs. Now connected to the camera, we do have a 200 milliwatt VTX. Obviously it is adjustable, so you can set it to 25 milliwatts if you are gonna enter some races. Here we do have the VTX antenna. It is pretty long, I wish it was a little bit shorter, or there was a way to just pass the wire through to actually secure this a little bit better. Now having said that underneath here, you can see the UFL antenna for that VTX, and it has some glue on here so this thing can be more secure especially during a crash. So they did think about that. This thing is designed for crashes. Now behind the camera here, you do have a USB-C port and that's gonna interface with your computer. So you can go on beta flight and change the parameters on this drone here, as well as the antenna right here for your receiver. Now my drone here features an Express LRS uh, receiver and that's pretty much the standard in the industry. This thing is very light, but it's good for penetration and long range. So I do suspect that you are gonna outrange your VTX compared to the RX link on this drone. So Express LRS is the way to go. 
is a good choice by Emacs. To the right of the antenna, we have the plugs for the motors. We talked about these motors being new and they are plug type, so they can plug right into the actual flight controller. And that's pretty cool in case you do damage one, repair should be very easy. And that's really crucial, especially during a race. No need for soldering. If one motor goes bad, you just unscrew it plug it in and you're good to go. As I say, off to the races. Now underneath here, we have the tray for the 1S battery as well as a rubber band to keep the battery here secure. And that leads us to the connector on this drone. Now Emacs says this is a first for them. This is their new EM 2.0 connector. Now this thing here gives you a lot of performance, lower battery sag and better current flow going to the drone. Now this is a superior connector compared to the PH 2.0, but gives you similar performance, maybe better performance than the actual VT 2.0. But the big difference here is that this one here is open source. And what does that mean? That means that any manufacturer can adopt this connector right here, and then they don't have to pay for a licensing fee to use it. That lowers the cost of the drones overall going to you. And it also gives you better performance overall. So it's pretty much a win-win with this new connector on here. Now Emacs has sent these connectors on here, so you can actually convert your existing drones or change the connectors on your existing batteries as well. These things are pretty amazing and Emacs is really proud of this. They've done some extensive testing with these and they've seen some really good results with these connectors. Now, if you wanna convert your batteries and drones for yourself, I'll leave links to some of these connectors down below so you can take a look at it. It really is pretty cool. So we'll test these 1S batteries out. They do have the EM 2.0 connector on here. It looks almost like a hybrid between the BT 2.0 and the XT30 connector. And I'm sure that's what they were going for. Now talking about batteries, we do have the 320 milliamp hour 1S batteries. These things are very light. They look like they're gonna perform very well, but it is Emacs branded. So we'll see how they perform and see the flight time on this. Emacs says we can get around four minutes of flight time with this setup right here. And we'll see if that comes to light. Okay, so overall this drone here looks very well designed and it does look very durable, but we'll see that once we take it for a flight. So let's do that. Now to set up this whole kit is very simple. Now let's start off with the transmitter here. This is the E8 transmitter. This thing here is pretty cool. And the big thing here is that these switches are all labeled. So if this is your first time finding an FPV drone, this will be a walk in the park. Now the first thing to know here is the arm disarm switch. This is one of the most important switches in FPV. This will start and stop the motors for this NanoScot right here. Next we have the mode switch right here. And that can switch between beginner, intermediate, and expert mode right here. So once you're satisfied and comfortable with the beginner mode, you can go to intermediate mode or go to expert mode and have full accurate capabilities with this NanoScot right here. Now on top here, you have your beeper switch right here. So in case you do crash and lose your drone, you can put this beeper on and it will help you find the drone. Now in conjunction with that, we do have a crash flip switch right here. So in case you do crash your drone and it's in a place where you can see it, or you don't want to walk to the drone, you can hit that crash flip drone and then flip the drone right side up and then fly it back to you. It's a pretty cool feature. It's also known as turtle mode as well. Now besides that, we have two gimbals on here. Pretty nice, very smooth. I've used this E8 transmitter in the past and this is a pretty decent feeling uh, gimbal on here. Now the left gimbal here is obviously your throttle. This will make the motor spin faster or slower as well as the yaw gimbal right here to actually move the drone in the vertical plane. So that's pretty cool. The right stick here does the roll. So that helps the drone actually roll left or right as well as the pitch up or down as you can change the pitch on the drone up or down. A combination of these controls here will make you fly faster and make you have a nice clean coordinated flight while you're flying your FPV drone. Now besides that you have a lanyard hook right here. I don't see a lanyard anywhere in the whole kit here, but this is a very light radio. But if it does become tiring and heavy, you can put a lanyard here and put it around your neck to distribute the weight. Besides that we have the power button right here, as well as some trim switches right here. Now we typically don't use trim switches in FPV, but these things here should work in case your drone does drift left or right. Now on the bottom here, you have a 3.5 millimeter jack here, as well as a USB-C port to actually charge the battery in this radio. Now the coolest part of this whole radio here is this little port here to actually attach a monitor. And you're saying what monitor? Well, actually the monitor in your goggles, pretty cool. So let's open this up and see how this goggles looks like. This is the Transporter 2. Now on the front here, you have a quick start guide to navigate the menu on these goggles. We'll take this off. And here it is. It's a nice looking goggles, guys. This is the Transporter 2. 
And the best feature of it is that this thing can detach and here you are, here's your screen. This is now turned into a fields monitor. So you can actually use this for spectating uh, other races. And the cool thing is if you're like visually impaired, you can't really use these goggles, then you can actually attach this to the actual radio and you can fly it this way. It really is a pretty cool design and Emacs thought about all that when they designed this whole kit right here. Let's talk a little bit about this interface, this monitor or the screen here. On the right side, you have an auto scan right here so you can scan for your channels. You also have a menu and a power switch right here, as well as a micro SD card here. This does have a DVR so you can record your races or in case you crash your drone somewhere, you can replay the footage and see exactly where you crashed your drone. On the opposite side, you have a band and a channel button right here as well as a record here for your DVR. So literally you have a 3.5 millimeter port for your audio, as well as a micro USB port to actually charge the battery in this monitor. Uh, below that you have a quarter 20 screw, that's actually to attach to your actual monitor, or if you have a tripod, you can set this up like a ground station and have this here for spectators to see. On top here we have the two antennas, which is pretty cool, and we'll attach it right now. And here's your first antenna, we'll just screw this on. And here's your second one. Pretty nice. So we're just gonna attach this to the goggles here. Pretty cool. Now typically box style goggles will not accommodate glasses and this is no exception. It will be very difficult to wear this with glasses. But there is some minor adjustment with these goggles as well. As you can see, this thing is telescoping so you can actually extend it to adjust the focal length of the actual screen. Now I've used these before in the past and I tend to have pretty good image or clarity on the furthest setting of these goggles. So really far out. I can take this off, put this to my face, and I'm good to go. All right, so hopefully that works as well in this case as well. This foam on here is pretty good, very soft, very comfortable. There is a big gap right here in the nose area to accommodate different faces, but there is some light leak coming from here but they really cannot accommodate for every face on the market. So they have to make it a little bit bigger. I do wish that they did include some foam on here, maybe some padding right here so we can make this more adjustable. But overall, this is a really cool design. You have three points of contact here to secure this straightly to your head. We'll try this out in a few moments once we power on this whole setup right here. Now, as I said before, we do have some extra stuff in this bag. We have some spare propellers, which is cool. And actually, we talked about it earlier, here's your EM. 2.0 connectors, they actually threw in some extras on here. So if you wanna convert some of your other one S batteries, they did give you some spares. I think that's pretty cool that Emacs did that. They didn't really have to do that, but they're trying to get you to try this uh, EM 2.0 connector for yourself and see the performance of it. Now we are gonna take this for a flip. Before we do that, you do wanna charge the batteries on all these components, including the radio and the goggles. And Emacs does provide all the cables and actually the charge to get this whole thing here done. Okay, the first thing we'll do is just do the charger for the batteries for the drone. Pretty straightforward, you just plug this into a USB bank or some kind of outlet or charger brick. As far as the actual goggles and the radio here, it's pretty straightforward. Micro USB and USB-C. You have your respective cables right here for that. All right, so I'm gonna charge all these devices here for a few minutes and then we're gonna go for a flight. Okay, so we have all our batteries charged here. Now, before you power on your goggles, make sure you have your antennas already connected to the actual uh, goggles here. These things were designed to have the antennas built into it or connected once you're powered it up. That's it, let's turn these things on. So the first thing I'm gonna do is turn on the radio. Let's do that. We're gonna press and hold the center button right here. Pretty cool, green light. And then we're gonna turn on the actual goggles. Hopefully you guys can see this. And that should come to life. It says Emacs and we have the static on there. All right, let's try to plug this drone in. I also have a fan here to keep it cool. And let's plug this in see if this thing powers on. All right, it's beeping. Oh, the beeper's probably on. Ha, the beeper was on. But I don't have any video on my actual monitor right here. So we're just gonna do an auto scan and see if we can find it that way. We can do it the old fashioned way too, but we'll just do an auto scan and see if it finds it. Hit the button and see if we find a video. There it is. <laughs> There's a picture of me right there. Hopefully you guys can see that. And it's a pretty nice picture on here. Okay, the video looks good. Let's put this on. I don't know why this is making a noise. Now to get this motor to start, this is a very common issue with beginners. Make sure that the throttle is all the way down before you arm it. If you don't have it all the way down, it's not going to arm. And we're gonna try in beginner mode first. Okay. 
camera angle is somewhat high. Not bad. The rates seem low. Ooh, that bright light. <laughs> there it is. I would like to see the actual voltage right now, but I can't see it. But it shows uh, 3.4, so which is good. You want to have it at 3.5. Never go below 3.5 on your FPV batteries. But these are 1S batteries. You can probably get it a little bit lower than 3.5 on the landing and get some more flight time. It's cool that the damn thing beeps. I guess it's an inactivity beep or alarm. Okay guys, so I'm gonna fly this drone here over the next couple days and then give you my final impressions on this NanoScout RTF. Okay, so back from our flight test and the NanoScout did a pretty good job. Now I started off indoors here in angle mode, also known as beginner mode here on the E8 transmitter. And this thing flew pretty well. Now the first thing I noticed was how low the rates were on this radio here or on this drone. But that's pretty normal for a drone of this size and that's perfect for a beginner pilot trying to get into this hobby here. And believe it or not, a lot of racers actually do fly their drones or race their drones in angle mode. And most of my flight indoors was also in angle mode. So I would recommend you start in that mode and feel more comfortable with that and then progress to intermediate and then therefore acro mode. Now this drone here is super quiet guys, not very loud at all. And this will be the perfect drone to fly during the winter months, especially coming up right now into whoop season guys. So if you do have some family members around, this will be the perfect drone to fly since it's not very loud. Now on subsequent flights, I did fly this thing outdoors and I did have the ability to fly this thing in the expert mode or acro mode and the rates were increased dramatically, which gives you a lot more maneuverability. And this drone here is very, very capable guys. But I did wish I did have some more power on the recovery of those maneuvers. Now, if the winds are above five to 10 miles an hour, then I really wouldn't recommend flying this thing outdoors. This thing does get bothered by the wind. And that's kind of normal for a drone of this size and weight, especially with these larger ducks on here. But overall, the NanoScout did a really good job and has really good flight characteristics. Okay, let's move on to the visuals of the NanoScout. Now this feature is an analog system with the RunCam Nano 3 camera. And it did a pretty good job, especially indoors. This thing was very colorful and vibrant. Really no issues at all flying this thing indoors. Now outdoors wasn't bad either, but I did notice a lot more tearing in the image. Now that's kind of acceptable or normal for an analog VTX but I wish it wasn't there, it was kind of distracting. You can see a little bit when I'm flying near the kid's area, you can see some of the lines kind of tearing. Overall, this camera here is a pretty good match for this drone overall, just because it's so light, yet gives you accurate representation of the colors here. So the camera here isn't bad. Now, as far as the VTX, it's set at 25 milliwatts from the factory. I did do some flights around 25 milliwatts, especially indoors, never once did I have an issue. Now, subsequent flights, I did bump it up to around 200 milliwatts and did a good job as well, especially when I'm flying outside. Now, earlier I did say that the NanoHawk has a maximum power output around 200 milliwatts, but it's actually 400 milliwatts, which is pretty impressive for a drone of this size and a 1S power source. So that's pretty impressive. Now, I do think that this VTX antenna here could be secured a little bit more securely, but I never wanted to have an issue with it. I just feel like it's dangling kind of in the way here. Now, in addition to the visuals of the drones, these goggles here are pretty good. They fit very well around my face. There's still some light leaks here around the nose area, but it really isn't a heavy goggles overall. I did get really good reception from it. These uh, linear antennas did a pretty good job. Now, the one issue I did have on this, and you can see it in the first video, is on my first two flights, I was unable to record my flight only because the DVR kind of froze up. I did hit the record button on this, and it really didn't record. Now, this is not a new issue for these box style goggles. Now, in fact, most of the box style goggles on the market have the same kind of firmware or components. And typically, you can power this thing up. Let's do it right now. We'll power it up right here. And say you want to go race. Once you hit that record button, you are going to get a red tally light, which is pretty cool. It just indicates that this thing here is recording. So we're going to try it out right now. We're going to hit the record button on here, and you'll see a red light right here, as well as a red light on top. Now, that doesn't mean it's recording. Once it starts to flash, indicates once it start recording and it can take up to 10 seconds for it to start flashing as you can see here now it is flashing and as you can see in the video the light just stayed solid red so i kind of missed my first two flashes, my first kind of impressions 
But on subsequent flights, guys, this thing worked as advertised. It did record every flight from that point afterwards. So that may have been a one-off situation in my case here. But overall, the actual goggles and DVR here work pretty well. And I do like the versatility of this monitor right here. Pretty cool design. Okay, so on to battery life of the Nano Scout here. Now, the EM 2.0 connector did a pretty good job, guys. Really good connection. Uh, really no voltage sag. This thing performed very well. Now, in my flights here, I did average around 2 minutes and 45 seconds to around 3 minutes of flight time. Very rarely did I average above 3 minutes. I did have some flights that I got like around 3 minutes and 5 seconds, maybe 3 minutes and 10 seconds which Emacs is advertising as the average lifespan. So these batteries can meet that advertised flight time, but so I was landing somewhere around 3.3 volts on the landing. So you have to get really low to get around three minutes of flight time. If you do land around 3.5, which is the average cell you wanna land at, usually in multi-cell batteries, then you're gonna get around two minutes and 40 seconds. But with these 1S batteries, you can take them a little bit lower and yes, you can get the advertised three minutes of flight time. I would highly recommend you pick up more of these batteries. It does come with two, which is pretty good, but I, I did feel like I wish I had more batteries. Okay, last but not least, let's talk about the durability of the Nano Scout. Now, I did have multiple crashes here in my days of testing here. I had a lot of crashes indoors on the carpet, on tile. I did have some crashes outdoors as well, concrete on some mulch, and this drone here held up very well, surprisingly very well. This thing looks actually almost brand spanking new, guys. There's nothing on here, no broken propellers. There is some uh, some debris near the motors, like some dog hair and stuff like that. But <laughs> um, this thing held up very well. Uh, the camera here is very well protected. As you can see, the props are all on here, nothing flew off. It is a light drone, guys. Not much momentum or inertia, so I don't know. I don't, I, I don't foresee this thing ever getting damaged. Now, earlier we talked about this VTA container right here, and I did crash a lot on here, but never once did it get caught up in the propeller or anything. But honestly, this glue on here works very well. I still don't like it that it's just dangling right here. Doesn't seem too confidence inspiring, but it, it, it does work. It does work, no issues there at all. So the durability of this thing is very good, and this thing is built like a tank, guys. Now, one more thing I want to talk about this drone, which I don't usually talk about in my reviews, is the upgradability of this drone here or this kit. Only because it's an RTF kit, I do want to include that category in here. Now, a lot of people would say for a first-time pilot not to go with the RTF kit, simply because these things can't be upgraded or you can't move on with these equipment to your future drones. So let's talk a little bit about the upgradability of this kit, if that's even a word. Now let's talk about the drone here. Now this drone here is pretty cool. You can fly this drone here. Obviously it has Express LRS. So you could potentially fly this drone here with other radios. You do have the option to actually remove these motors, change the motors, and then it's just a simple plug and play affair on here. But this drone here is kind of maxed out. It has Express LRS. You have a, a nice analog camera on here and a pretty cool frame. So you really don't want to upgrade this drone, but you might want to move on from this drone or get a different drone with a different characteristic. And that leads us to these two points right here. This is the radio and the goggles. So if you do move on from this Nano Scout, can you use your existing equipment right here? And the answer is yes, guys. Since now these manufacturers are including Express LRS in their drones, it makes it a lot easier to use your original or your existing equipment for future drones. This is a Express LRS transmitter. So you technically could use this on other drones. Express LRS has really good range, so range really shouldn't be an issue. And you can actually reassign these switches for whatever you wanna do. Say you wanna have GPS return, you can assign a switch for that function, guys. So can you use this in your hobby going forward? I think you could. Same with the goggles here. This is an analog goggles here. It's not locked into this specific drone. Most drones out there can accommodate a analog VTX. So long as your drone is analog, this goggles can be used. Now, if you wanna move on to something more expensive, more premium like digital, then this can't be used, but you still have a purpose with this. This can turn into a field monitor, so if you wanna test your drones on the bench, or if you have specters around your flying, then you can just hand them this and show them what you're looking at while you're flying in your upgraded goggles. So this has multiple use, multiple purposes, and I do think that the upgradability on this RTF kit is really good. Okay, so overall, what do I think about the Nanoscout RTF kit and who is this for? Well, if you're a new pilot trying to get into the hobby and racing is a big interest of yours, 
this would be the perfect kit. It has everything from the goggles to the radio, even the drone hair specifically made for racing, especially 65 millimeter racing. This is pretty awesome right here. So you can just pick this up, charge your batteries, and go to the races, guys. This thing is pretty awesome. Now, if you're also into racing, you can also get this drone here separately. And it's a pretty good buy. I think that they have achieved what they wanted to, which was build a very durable and capable racing drone right here. And this fits the bill, especially with this new EM2 connector on here. It does give you good performance, good battery life, and efficiency, guys. And we'll see if this thing here catches on and lowers the cost for these drones in the future, since it's a little bit of a cheaper connector compared to the competitors, guys. Now, if you're the pilot that has outgrown this or wants something a little bit faster to race in, then we have one right here. This is the Emax Hawk Apex. This is a five inch drone, also made as a three and a half inch drone and designed specifically for racing. I've done a full review on this one and I'll leave it linked right here. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.